trying to make this happen and it hasn't and so yes all is truly perfect um i don't know maybe it's the seven o'clock time slot i'm not quite sure what it is but um but at any rate everything works out how it's supposed to and um all is well and my other computer is really slow about booting up so we'll let that go i was really enjoying sitting here listening to um, the open mic session and to hear everybody pick up the mic today has been so crazy um, I'm not sure I I am also streaming this over Ustream and hopefully that's picking up not I don't know for sure but um, but it's ustream.tv forward slash Sandra said it and someone came up to me in church the other day I think it was Debbie and said to me Sandra I watched you on Ustream and your office didn't look as messy as you said it was and I had to chuckle big to myself thinking to myself that's because of the camera angle and um, <laughs> and so again here I am and it's Monday and Mondays are always fabulous for me and uh, and and I had so many things going on with my dad today so um, yeah it's it, it all works out it will work out it's already all right it's already good today I am so excited to talk to you um, last week I had an occasion to begin a new class for the Course in Miracles here in Cleveland and um, had a good turnout a lot of people I'm so excited about it just excited because I get to you you guys I don't know if you know this about me but I first off you do know that I get overly excited if you've ever listened to me before I get overly excited about everything that I talk about and then when I get to talk about the things that I love to talk about not just the Course in Miracles but when I get into symbolism and the and the meaning behind the ideas that we share, it just it seems so great and so wonderful and so juicy. And so um, and so this whole thing, this opportunity is just great again. So I'm excited and I hope that everybody who comes will be excited. And at some point I will learn how to broadcast or see what it takes for me to broadcast from my class live and so if I can capture that on tape um, then that would just be fabulous so um, I'm excited I'm excited I'm excited I'm always excited spirit is exciting this whole thing as it unfolds through each and every one of us is exciting to me so let me start off like I always do um, with the introduction of A Course in Miracles because that just sets me up just right. Uh, from the front of your book, right behind the table of contents in front of the text, there's this little paragraph that just says over top of it, it says introduction. And it goes like this. It says, this is A Course in Miracles. It is a required course. Only the time you take it is voluntary. Free will does not mean that you can establish the curriculum. It means only that you can select what you want to take at a given time. The aim of the course is not to teach the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. It does aim, however, at removing the blocks to your awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. The opposite of love is fear, but what is all-encompassing can have no opposites. This course can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened, and nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Oh, isn't that fabulous? So, um, so you guys, uh, the course... I, of, of course, you know, when, you're, when you start um, working the course and teaching a class on a regular basis... It causes you to um, to delve back into it and really dissect it over and over again. I know that we come in here to develop a sense of trust, to develop trust, not just in spirit, but in, in, in ourselves, in our individual selves. And so I am always like looking 
and finding something new. And every time I look at it, it's like all of a sudden it's like bells ring, ding, 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 ding. And I see something all over again for the very first time. And 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 I don't care. It, it's kind of like one of those movies that you watch over and over again. You've seen it a hundred times, but every time you see it, there's some little nuance that you didn't see before and you're wondering why you didn't see it before and then you take that little bitty thing and then you turn it over and you inspect it and think mm, I wonder like why I missed that before and if at this moment I can squeeze any more meaning out of that and so um, let me uh, I know you guys are, are not are not necessarily watching me but I uh, what I did was for my class my new class I put together a little cheat sheet so to speak because I realized that everybody that comes to the class some people will be coming because you know just because I announced that I was teaching a class and um, some people will come because they're true core students and so for those who are just be coming just because they want to see if it's something that they might be interested in I developed a little cheat sheet and uh, the cheat sheet has some of my every week I'll change the favorite quotes and every week I'll change um, the the text that I'm featuring and that I'm talking about and some of the ideas in there and then some of the symbols that we'd like to look at and so and that way it's always like something you know that I could you know give to somebody they could take home they even have homework and the homework this past week and I know it's totally off um, you guys might not understand it but I, I'm sure you do because you're all spiritual folks but um, one of the parts of the homework assignment was to read to re-watch the matrix had they not watched it before and so um, when when we start talking about symbolism I think that it's important all over the place for us to see the symbols and not miss them for for looking at the details and so the course is no different I was reading and and I know I get excited and it's okay because it's me it's my nature um, the course is no different and having its um, language in there that sometimes harkens us back to stuff that we have learned in other arenas. And so when we learn these things in other arenas without necessarily, it, it, it's as if there is this meaning. It, it, it kind of has these key words that takes us back to ideas that we may have studied in some other religious teachings that, that we've grown up in. So, you know, we see them all the time. And so as we look at them and we read them, it's like, now, what does this mean in the old context of where we were? What does this mean in the new context of where we are? And how does it all fit together? Why is it important that I'm seeing this now? Um, I remember taking a class from, uh, I told you guys before that I took these psychic development classes. And one of the things that we learned how to do was anytime something comes up to us, anytime anything is presented to us, she said, always ask yourself about the, where you were and what you were thinking, where you were in your life when you heard this before. And so those will give us some clues as to um, what the meaning is because because everything even your dreams when you dream you dream in symbols and those symbols don't necessarily translate like the like the course tells you revelation doesn't translate well from one person to the next because it's your particular revelation it's your particular download it comes in the framework that you understand and just because you understand it does not mean that everybody will understand it so when I show shared with you guys um, before that you know when they told me about heaven and hell I had the concept like most people do that heaven was up in the sky and hell was down below 
and I would actually take off the cover off of the drain pipes and think that if I just could, you know, squeeze down into that drain pipe or look deeply down in there, I would actually be able to see hell. Because for me, I grew up thinking that hell was up underground. And I didn't know that there was a whole sewer system and basements and all of this stuff that came. When you took the journey to the center of the earth, like that movie we used to watch was, that, that eventually when you get to the center of the earth, below, far below the ground, you were going to get to this place that was burning and that was hell and the devil was there. I I had no clue that it was talking um that, that that it was talking about something totally different. And so symbolically, what does that say to us? I mean, symbolically, this up in the heavens, up above, this out in the ethers, what does that mean as opposed to what does down below mean? So as I come to the course, I always approach everything with that same type of perspective that there is some juicy little hidden secrets that are there for me to unlock, for me to see, for each of us to see from the framework or through the framework of our understanding. And so if we could just simply just pay attention and unlock those little nuggets, then we would see that all of the things that we read have this layered meaning for each of us. And so I come, I come today with ah, oh, with all of the stuff because it's so, 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 so juicy good. So um, now I say all that to say that recently I have been reading, um, and I've shared this before because uh, so many of uh, so many of us have talked about it. I shared this before that I was reading Joseph Campbell and his book "Thou Art That," and I know I have been so caught up with so many things. I haven't gotten very far in the book, but every time I pick it up, it's like. <gasps> A whole nother idea that jumps out at me and I'm just so elated and inspired by them. And so I'm going to share a couple of those. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. I finally got my other computer up and working and um, and so as soon as I got it up that's why you guys probably heard that echo because it came online too and so now I've got two IDs in the room in the room in the room in the room okay so so uh, so here we go um, in and I'm going to share this in just a second because I wanted to look at something else and um, you know, it is, it is, it is so wonderful when you go through and you're just in chapter one, section one of the course, it talks about what miracles are. Miracle is a service. Miracles transcend the bodies. Miracles are teaching devices. Um, miracles bear witness to truth. Miracles are both beginnings and endings. You know, it goes through and it talks about all of these miracles are expressions of love. Um, miracles should inspire gratitude, but not all. Miracles praise God through you. I mean, miracles are a way of earning release from fear. A miracle is a universal blessing from God through me to all my brothers. Miracles are a kind of exchange. Miracles are spectacles. Are are should not be used to as spectacles to induce belief. Um, prayer is the medium of miracles. Miracles are thoughts. All of these things kind of point us to this, this transcendent type of ideology that is saying to us that that it is so vast, it is so expansive. And remember before, as I talked about this thing, the moment we try to label something or name it, and, and we try to pinpoint it as if it's a noun, it sort of excludes a whole bunch of things. And so it becomes this thing, this process in chapter one, section one, of trying to tell you all of the possibilities that miracles are so that we remain open in our ideas about what they are, about how they are used, um, and about how they affect the way that we see the world. It's like this whole, you know, this whole 
expansive thing to sort of open us up to the possibility of not just seeing them in a in a small narrow framework that we do but seeing it in a broad broader way much broader than we are used to because for many of us we want to we want to kind of like shrink down and 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 say all the things that you know that God is and all the things that God is not and so we try to narrow it down to the point of which to the point at which we sort of lose the allness of it that allness that expansiveness all that is and all that is not all that you see all that you perceive all that operates in and throughout this everything everything no matter how you label it good or bad tall short hot cold um visible non-visible energy non-energy life this thing that you think of as death all of these things are included in this this awareness of God in what God is and even the non-awareness. So all of those things are inclusive, but because we try so hard to kind of like localize this idea of God, we miss so much. And so, yes, we have to stop. We have to take it out of the box and sort of understand all the ways um, in which God is. And Beth, that's interesting that you should um, that you should use that. Yes, boxing God. Um, it's interesting that you should use that terminology. I was reading a, um, a, a thing the other day about this guy who makes art out of boxes. And he takes cardboard boxes and he shapes these cardboard boxes into all of these odd things, all these oddities. And, he, and, and sort of redefines what a box is, what cardboard is, and what the possibilities of the box is. And so at certain points, we have to even redefine the boxes that we allow ourselves to be put in. It takes a reacclimation or, 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 or an openness at the top to see all the possibilities um, that could be. And so, um, yeah, it's, yeah, our arms are too short to blocks with God, too. So, um, so all the possibilities of what God is. So now let me, let me jump over here because I want to get to, um, I want to get to what I read in, uh, in Joseph Campbell, because I thought it was such, such a good idea, a, such a poignant idea. And I'm not going to read it for you this time. I may on Wednesday, um, read some stuff because I like, I like reading for people, but at the same time, it's like, um, it, it sort of slows me down. <laughs> And, you know, and, and, and not that I don't love to be slowed down, but at the same time, it's like, okay, let me just, let me just roll because I can probably tell you a lot more than I could read to you in a short period of time. So, um, one of the things that Joseph Campbell talked about was this idea of transcendence, that the moment we think, or, or he was talking about those definitions. Remember, I was telling you that before. The moment we think we've got a pinpoint on God, or we could name God, or say what God is, that's the moment at which we cancel out so much more that God really is. And so when when I read here in this in the in the Course in Miracles, the meaning of miracles, and I was going through that, all of that, I was thinking to myself, how often do we talk about God is this, God is that, God, 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 God. And so we say, I am that I am, or God is all things, or God is omnipresent, but then yet and still. What we have a tendency to do is take an incident like 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 what happened in Boston and say, okay, well, this over here is God, but that over there is not. As if somehow God can, we can attribute all the good things that happen to God. But the moment we judge them, the moment we think that something is bad or something is wrong, then we want to say, but that's not God. That's the devil over there. But but what we do is is we want to like 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 make God in our own image rather than let God be what God is. And so it becomes this thing of of how do we how do we see all the things that we see, the, all the things that go on and still recognize and know that there is nothing that is not within that godness. So, so Joseph Campbell in his book, he talked about this idea of um, putting it in terms that we can really understand. 
um, he said that we look and we want to say, remember in here, oh, where is it, where is it, where is it? Um, there is a, a part in here that says that, um, oh gosh, where is it? I, I don't even know where it is. Um, it says each day is devoted to miracles. The purpose of time is to enable you to learn to use time constructively. That's just a teaching device that in, and a means to an end. Time will cease when it's no longer useful in facilitating learning. Okay, and then there is a, another one. That was not the one that I was looking to read. Um, but there's another one that talks about... Um, Oh, only creations of light are real. Where is it? It's, uh, why? You know what? I've got so much highlighted. Maybe I should read that which is not highlighted in order for me to get that part to you. But anyway, um, it, it's, it's interesting because one of the things I talk about in, um, in my class, I talked about this past class was that Darkness is not an entity in and of itself. Darkness is an absence of light. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. It says miracles dissolve error because the Holy Spirit identifies error as false or unreal. This is the same as saying that by perceiving light, darkness automatically disappears. By perceiving light, darkness automatically disappears. So, um, no, that's not the book I'm, I'm talking about. I'm talking about Thou Art That. Thou Art That by Joseph Campbell. And, um, and so, so, so darkness in itself is not an entity. Darkness is simply the absence of light. And so as we talked about that, we, we talked about this idea that naming a thing, trying to pinpoint, localize God, where God is, takes away something from the allness. Because how do you, how do you pinpoint what is all encompassing? How do you pinpoint that which is all things? It is no way to pinpoint it. It is almost as if you've just got to simply throw up your hands and just say, there is nothing that it is not. I mean, it is just all things. And so he said, he, and so Joseph Campbell did it so wonderfully because he did it exactly as the course might explain it to you. He says, when, when you think about yourself, you are the light. Each and every one of us, you are the light. He says, but nobody walks into the room if the light goes out. Nobody walks into the room and says, oh my God, you know, the light bulb that was Grace or the light bulb that was Lynn or the light bulb that was Doc Hill or the light bulb that was Dove, something that that light has now gone out and that light is no more. He says that, he says what we do is, is we simply go and we change the light bulb. He says, it's the light he says, you are the light. So, so it's so wonderful because when, when Jean Houston in, in one of her books said that you are the lensing point of God consciousness here on earth, she was so right. When you think about a lens, what does light do? Light passes through a lens and that lens can either disperse light or it can amplify light and bring it together. You as the lensing point of God of God consciousness. So in the same regard, you are a light bulb in this particular realm. In this realm here on earth, in your body, your body is like that light bulb. It is not the light, but rather the conduit for the light. You take the light out, the light doesn't go away. The light is simply dispersed in its allness. But because you are here, you become the lensing point of this light here on earth. And so, yes, you are the light of the world. You are the lensing point of light. So, so light is what you are. It is not, so, so it becomes this thing of, um, 
you got sucked into a, a dark vortex. No, you're not in a darkness vortex. And, and if you think that you are, all you simply have to do is change your mind, right? I mean, that's what's so wonderful about it. You can simply change your mind because it is done. Miracle is a thought. It is done the moment you change your mind and you think and know differently for yourself. You are that powerful. So it becomes this thing of of this light bulb. If if I'm sitting here and I'm okay, so I got a light bulb right here by me. I'm actually screwing it out. So I've got this light bulb. This light bulb is what you know a lot of us would consider ourselves to be the light bulb. But now if you think that this light bulb defines, contains, um, limits you, you've mistaken your greatness. The light bulb simply lenses this light. It simply harnesses the light. It is not the light itself. And so, and so you transcend all of this stuff. So when we say that you have misidentified yourself, you are not your body, you are not the light bulb, but you are the light. And so when you see a light turned on in the room, the, it is, it, it, it's the light it is the light that's important and not the bulb that created it because all the bulb is doing is is just just lensing that light it's bringing it into a particular place it's kind of like we used to see those um those movies where the guy would be running along and he's like the keeper of the fire the flame and and the flame and the fire was all so important it was one of the um it, i think there's um uh, what is that? The, uh, what? I, I'm, I'm grappling for the word here. Um, it was water, air, um, fire, and what? And wind or whatever. I don't know. It was like four different resources or something like that. I don't know what it was. But fire was this important earth. Okay, yes. And so fire was this important thing. And so, you know, people would somehow think that the person who was able to create the fire was able to create magic, do something magical without recognizing that that wasn't, you know, the, the fire, just like light and all of that other stuff, earth, wind and fire. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, so, so <laughs> yeah, today is earth day and I would forget earth. Thank you. And so. So it becomes this thing of us starting to understand all of the different, you know, the different wonders and the different elements and all of that stuff as, as, as the truth that they are. It is, it is this, this, uh, it's this wonderful way of seeing, no matter what you're looking at, it's this wonderful way of seeing how spirit works in each of us. So as I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that, you know, that yes, I am, I am all of these things I am these things but at the same time that is not it does not I am not limited by whether or not somebody comes in and flicks on a light switch or not I am so much more you are so much more so when so when this this earthly body when that light bulb breaks or when that light bulb sort of burns out after a while it does not light does not dissipate or it does not go away, it simply changes form. And so it's so wonderful because we see that every morning, no matter what, it's like, let there be light. And there is light. Light is the love and glue of the entire universe. That is not like sunlight, but sunlight is from that original light. Thank you. Yes, light is the love and the glue of the entire universe. And you know what? Though, when we're in the darkness, it's so wonderful too. It's, it's, it's almost as if, um, you know, when we think about the process of life, this, this process, this birthing of light. Um, when, when we are in the womb, we are submersed in water and in darkness. And then after the gestation period of your growth, there is all these pains that come and somebody squeezes down and then out comes you into this light, into the air. They, 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 they used to smack butts and so you can suck in 
breathed into the nostrils the birth of light. I mean, the, you know, breathed into, the, the, into your nostrils this breath. And then you become this living being. Um, this living being that is the lensing point of God consciousness of light right here on earth in that moment. And so it becomes this whole thing of all of it working together. You, it said, was made from the dust of the earth like I was. All of this stuff working together. All of them symbols that point us past past this thing that we want to say is just G-O-D into the allness of all things, the out of which all things were created. So when it says to you this idea that that which is seen comes from that which is not seen, it's because all of this stuff, it, you know, it, it's, ah, uh, we were given birth. I mean, how wonderful is that? I, you know, I don't even know if you guys get excited like I do about this stuff because it's just, and I, and I mean, and for some of us, it's like, ah, you know, that's, uh, I know that, I know that, it's all good. But the funny thing about it is, is that I don't think that if we knew all the time just how powerful we were. I think that some of the, some of the, you know, arguing about the little points, the details would just disappear. Um, uh, the, 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 in, in some traditions, they talk about that which is along with that which is not. So the, the space in between the letters, the void that gives definition to the thing itself. I mean, that gives definition to your body, to to you versus me and all these things. So we can have a thousand bulbs. We can have a billion bulbs walking around here. And all these bulbs are the same. They're giving off light. And some of them, because they don't know that what they're here to do is give off light, they'll kind of give off some kind of like other kind of ooky shade of something else. Like, oh, let me get a pink bulb or let me get a blue bulb or, or let me be a um, what do you call it? A black light bulb so I can show you all the lint that's on your clothes and the gray hairs that's in your head and it'll sort of magnify stuff that you would rather not see. Um, it'll show you the stains and the all that other stuff that you don't necessarily want to be. Some people want to glow red. Some people want to glow a different color. All, but all of it is light. All of it is love. All of it is is this this eternal look. Look, the infinite eternal light love that is your truth. <laughs> See there, all of it is working together, and so, um, so it becomes this thing of of this transcendence. I remember seeing back, um, uh, I don't even know where I got this from. Um, I like to tell people sometimes where I get information from because, you know, while I understand it on one level, it's like all of us working together, we get a whole nother understanding from it. It's, it, it's sort of like it rounds out the information that we receive when I can share it with somebody else. But in uh, certain other cultures, um, they had this thing called the court gest jester. And the court jester was just there to poke fun and to, you know, clown around. And um, and this court jester was kind of made it acceptable to make jokes about things that were, um, that some people take so seriously. So you know how uh, I, I know in certain places that I go, people walk around and they, you know, they carry their Bible under, you know, tucked in, in their arm and, you know, want to be so serious and, and want to beat you over the head with their Bibles and tell you what thus saith the Lord and all of this other stuff. And so it becomes this, this whole thing of, of the seriousness. And so sometimes it is, yeah, and, yeah. And, and so, yes, that's exactly what they do. They, um, the, the gestures really poke fun at stuff that have very serious meaning to them, very wise meaning that might otherwise not be accepted if they didn't do so through humor. And so uh, sometimes we have to actually laugh at the absurdities of life. 
So, so a lot of times what we want to do is we want to make it so serious. We want to make God so serious. We want to make all of this stuff that we study so serious. But what do we always say in here? Sometimes you just got to laugh. I mean, you got to laugh. Because if we lose that sense of humor, if we take everything so serious, then we just, we lose part of what this thing is all about. We, we lose part of the journey and what the journey is for and how it's teaching us and showing us the very things that we need to know. So, um, so the Holy Spirit doesn't have to be serious. The Holy Spirit doesn't have to be dry and boring or or condescending. Um, I heard in in church the other day somebody made it. Uh, they wanted to make the point that you know uh, you didn't necessarily have to give up drugs and alcohol and stuff like that before you came to God. And and so um, you know they were saying that if you just come, then God will get you right. And I'm thinking to myself like, who's to say that they aren't already right? I mean. Who's to say that they aren't already exactly what they're supposed to be? And so it becomes this thing of, you know, let's get out of our own way with our judging. And this person who's coming with these things that they think are flaws, um, this person is being who they're supposed to be. And that's where they're supposed to be at the time until they decide not. And so, at you know, at a certain point, even in this community, we just got to remember to laugh. Uh, stories are often humorous teaching stories. I think, you know what, and I think that sometimes those are the stories that stick with us. The ones that we laugh at. The ones that we just kind of, kind of bowl over laughing about it because it's just so hilarious. Um, you know, I am, I'm one of those people. I, you know, I look at some of the oddest things and I think to myself like, wow, you know, if, if um, if people could see themselves through somebody else's eyes for a minute, um, they would stop. I think judging who they are, because because you know for some reason for some reason we've received this message in in our culture that everybody is supposed to look or act a certain way. Like there's a cookie cutter way that we're supposed to come out. You know, like everybody is supposed to look like the you know um, Giselle or some some model or something like that. And it's like really. I mean, really? I mean, is that what you find beautiful? And then if you ask somebody, it might not at all be what they find beautiful. And so these ideas of beauty and wonder and, 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 and juiciness and sexiness may be different all the way across the board. And so by us thinking that we need to be some cookie cutter image of another person, then that sort of... Um, that sort of kind of like takes away something that somebody else might find so wonderful and appealing and juicy and so thankful that you're here. If you ain't laughing, you're playing the ego's game. That's right. Remember not to laugh. <laughs> ah, the ego is the stuffed shirt. They would get plastic surgery. Celebrate the diversity within the sameness. You know, and, and, Mm. It, it's so cool when we can we can just open ourselves up to the allness, all the possibilities of what we are and how we are. I love it. I love it. Mm. Okay, I had to take a drink here for a second. Mm. Oh, and water. Isn't it wonderful? I love, 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 love. So, um... So as I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about um, about how we get how we get confused on what we're looking at, how we get confused um, in 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 how God presents itself to us and how miracles show up. You know, sometimes we think, and, and, and let me say this too, sometimes we think that miracles are supposed to be clean and pretty, you know? And, and they're not always, I mean, they're not always clean or pretty. They're not always heavenly or angelic, but they are always exactly what we need. So, um, in, in here, it says that when we're, when we're, when we think that we're conscious, you know, when we, when we're trying to consciously 
um, make a miracle or perform a miracle. That's to get it confused. I mean, that's not how it's supposed to be. It becomes this thing. I, I remember hearing this comedian say that, um, that another name for God was something. I, and I probably told you guys this before. He says, he says, you know how you, you're driving down the street. He says, and all of a sudden you get the, the, you see the lights, the, 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 the siren, you hear the siren and see the lights in your rear view mirror. And he says, and you get that little feeling in your stomach. And he says, and as you're pulling your car over, he's like you saying, something told me to slow down. You know, he says, something told you to do this. Something told you to do that. He said, that's the other name for God, something. He says, so when something tells you to do something, you got to listen to it. And so, yeah, it becomes this other name that we have for God. So as I was driving out there to see my dad today, something told me, Sandra, you better go over there and renew your license right now. Because I was driving right past the driver's bureau. As I was driving past it, something said, go and get your license renewed. Go get them updated. Because I had been driving around with my expired license plate. I mean, with my expired driver's license since my birthday. And you know, my birthday was a month ago. And so 30 days have passed and I still hadn't gotten it because I kept saying, oh, I'll go when I get my hair done. <laughs> you know, when I get my hair done and my hair is looking all good and cute, then I'll go and get my license and then, you know, I'll have a cute picture. And so as um, I go in there and I stand in this long line because it's getting, I guess, close to the end of the month. I stand in this long line. I wait, I wait, I wait. I finally get up there and the lady gives me this. Um, she tells me I've got to take an eye test this time. So I put my, you know, I'm going up there and she's like, okay, you've got to put your head in here and press. And I'm thinking, but I didn't study for this one. And she's like, she laughs at me and she was like, come on, take it anyway. So I, I take the eye test and miraculously I pass yeah because I, I wear readers I you know I wear these little things for reading so I didn't necessarily think I'd pass so I passed the, the the test and then when I go and I sit down in the chair and I get my picture taken the funny thing that she said to me was that she took the first one and she told me okay I've got to take that one over she took the second one and then she says oh this looks better than your old license does <laughs> and it's four years later <laughs> And so I'm thinking to myself, like, how does she know that what I was doing was waiting so that I could get my hair done so I could look cute on my driver's license because I wanted a cute driver's license. I didn't get my hair dry done, but I got my driver's license anyway. And she seems to think that it was cuter than the one that I like actually prepped for. So, yeah, how do I study for an eye test? I, you know, I just had an assumption that I needed to be prepared I don't know, eat some carrots, girl. I have no clue. <laughs> I just thought I could do something to make it better. I passed it anyway, and so um, so it's all it all worked out good. So um, so and and so for me, it's like when I realize that you know that 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 I need to listen to that voice. All of us need to listen to that voice. And no matter where we hear the voice coming from, because when I say something, or when I say the allness that God is present in everything, God can be just as present for you in a flower that you may see that stops you in your tracks and makes you just stop and smell the roses or a walk along a park or, um, you know, wherever, wherever. It's like when you, when you figure out that God speaks through any and everything, wherever you are, um, then you realize that, you know, that everything is used by spirit. And so when I told them, um, <laughs> when I told them the other day that I needed them to watch the matrix for me as part of their class homework, it was part of that whole thing about anything that it hasn't been unplugged can be used by the system for its own, for that curriculum. And so it becomes this thing of everything, everything, Everything is there speaking to us in every way, every day being used by God for our own enlightenment. 
And and so since you recognize, since I recognize that, um, yeah, then we we uh, we recognize how wonderful it is. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Doc Hill. Uh, I will. I I got your message and um, I'll check that out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, ha -ha. so yeah, it is all, it's all God. And, and the funny thing is, is that no matter what you're looking at, no matter where you are, no matter, you know, sometimes I don't, it's amazing to me. I have people, and I know you know this because you speak all the time. People come up to you and say, oh, that was exactly what I needed to hear today. That was exactly what I needed to see today. That was exactly this, or that was exactly that, or you were talking to me. And so it becomes this thing of us recognizing that at every moment, every moment, yes. So let go of all ideas and images in our minds. They come and go and are not even um, generated by us. Yes. And so none of this stuff, all of this stuff, all of it is God. And so all of it is good. So now let me do, yes, 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 give glory to God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the thoughts I think are not my real thoughts. You know, um, but, but here's the other thing about that. Um, I think that each of us comes here to show up, to show up and be who we are supposed to be. Now, I say that because I don't like for us to get confused that, um, you know, so so like say for instance, I've got this little, I'm, I'm this little, um, when I pulled out that bulb, the funny thing was, is that I pulled out the bulb that I did out of this lamp that's here on my desk. And I've got um, one, two, three, four lamps sitting right here in front of me. Um, one of them has a regular 60 watt, watt soft white bulb in it. The other one is a 100 watt um, reveal bulb by GE. They're going to stop making those soon. The other bulb that I have is part of this sun lamp that I have. Remember I was telling you guys about seasonal affective disorder, SAD. Um, that's another bulb or another light that I have sitting here on my desk. Because in the wintertime, I'd always turn that on to help me with that seasonal affective disorder. But when I was telling you about the light, the one that I reached for was this little bitty light. And... Um, but it's, it's called a high intensity light bulb and it's totally clear unlike all the rest of these bulbs that are sitting here it's totally clear and when you open when you turn it on if you look directly into it it is it's like so harsh because it is truly high intensity and so when i pulled the bulb out and i held that up I held up that bulb, not even conscious of why I chose that particular bulb, just that I did. Now, I've got four different types of bulbs here. Each of them does something different. Each of you brings something different, some different aspect of this God consciousness out that only you can bring. And so it becomes this thing, if you don't own um, your your take, your your light, the way that you shine it, if you can't own that, then there is something lost in how you lens that light. There's something lost in how you shine it. I am, I'm Sandra. I'm Sister Girl. I'm crazy. I'm the I'm Miss Enthusiasm. I'm Miss Off the Chart. I'm Miss High Energy. I'm, I don't know all of this stuff. I am that person. And so how I, um, how my bulb shines is going to be different than how your bulb shines. And if I lose that point and try to shine like a something else, like that 60 watt bulb over there, then I'm not doing my part. I'm not showing up to give my best. And so all of us, I think, have to come and respect the bulb that we are. 
with the light that it is that we're giving. No less light. Now, it's, it, it's all light. It's all light. But you're going to shine your light a little differently than I am. And so those thoughts, those ideas, those feelings, those emotions, those expressions, those ways that you are in the world is important. So it's your light. It's your light. And so shine your light. Speak your truth. Do you. And never minimize what you bring to the table because without you, the, uh, the, the, the kingdom would be bereft. Is that how it goes? Is that what it says? Without your particular light, the kingdom wouldn't be complete. We need all of the light. And we will wait for you until you get yours, until you figure out how to shine it just like you're supposed to shine it. But know that we need you and your light. Oh, that's so good. Okay, so I think that's my cue. <laughs> okay, so yes, it's my cue that it's time for me to go. So, um, yes, Sandra said it dot com at Sam Bishop. Uh, you guys, you have been wonderful. Thank you for being the wonderful light that you are. I'm going to let go of the mic because I will be here again on Wednesday at seven. So I'm letting go of the mic. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Did I drop the mic? Okay. highs of love.